Hi all, welcome to the new video. May 19 is observed as World Inflammatory Bowel Disease Day. World IBD Day, Inflammatory Bowel Disease. So, Inflammatory Bowel Disease is actually two, you can say two types or it can be classified into two diseases again. So, two diseases comes together as Inflammatory Bowel Disease. One is Crohn's Disease, the second one is Ulcerative Colitis. Crohn's Disease and Ulcerative Colitis are collectively called as Inflammatory Bowel Disease. IBD has no age. It is nothing to do with age. Okay, and I'll come to the age. Actually, it was told to be the age group. The distribution of age is bimodal age distribution. Means it's a peak of 15 to 20 years one age group, or it can affect elderly. But now it is told to be that it has no age. So earlier it was told to be the peak age of 15 to 20 years of age can be affected. Also, elderly can be affected. Why it is observed every year? It is observed every year to raise the awareness about the disease IBD. As it is common in western countries and Caucasians, it is common there but it is also there in India. Okay. So today I am going to talk about something about IBD, Inflammatory Bowel Disease. So Inflammatory Bowel Disease contains Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. It is affecting more commonly in females rather than males. It is bimodal age distribution as it is told in the textbooks but it is now, uh, there is no age as I told you. So that is some of the things. Etiology is not known clearly. The etiology, the etiology is not studied or clearly known, but the etiology known to be is a hypothesis known as hygiene hypothesis. Hygiene hypothesis is known to be the etiology what is said to be, but there is no proper etiology. What is this hygiene hypothesis? Hygiene hypothesis is the poor development of the mucosal immunity, poor immunity of the or poor development of the mucosa you can say, which can result in something known as hygiene hypothesis. Okay. So that can be the reason is what it is told to be and there are many genetic factors, genetic factors like there are some genes like uh, NO2 gene, NOD2 gene polymorphism can be a result, a genetic factor NO2 gene polymorphism, what happens there is a activation of the growth signaling pathway resulting in increase in the cell proliferation and resulting in the uh, IBD, inflammatory bubble disease. So one of the factor can be NO2 gene polymorphism, the second one can be ATG 16L1, ATG 16L1. That is ATG means autophagy related, autophagy related 16L1. Okay, autophagy related 16L1. That is one of the genetic factor. Then comes IL23 gene polymorphism. IL interleukin 23 gene polymorphism can be one of the genetic factor. And one more thing is IRGM. IRGM means immunity related GTPSM. So these are the four genetic factors that can be a etiology or pathogenesis of the uh, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. So it all is not clearly known, but it can be a hygiene hypothesis. The pathogenesis can be these things. So now coming uh, one by one, uh, what is the most common site where you can see Crohn's disease? Crohn's disease, the maximum site, the most common site you can say, most common site of Crohn's disease is in the ileum. Then comes the cecum. So ileum and the cecum. Okay. Whereas in ulcerative colitis, the most common site is rectum. Rectum, it can go upwards. It is retrograde in spread. So from the rectum, it goes to the colon. So it is going backwards. So it is a retrograde spread which affects the ulcerative colitis. So ileum in Crohn's disease and rectum is the most common site in ulcerative colitis, which is retrograde spread. Now coming to the layers which affects Crohn's disease affects transmurally. It affects all the layers of the stomach, mean the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis layer, serosa layer, every layer. It is transmural. So the incision, the ulcers will be deep, it's like a knife, uh, like ulcers will be there. So most common site is ileum, the uh, layers affected, transmural, it is transmurally affected, transmural it is, whereas ulcerative colitis, it, it is the, the rectum, the most common site is rectum, whereas uh, the lesion, it is like submucus, it is affecting the submucus layer. So transmural layer is Crohn's disease and submucus layer is affected with like ulcerative colitis. Now, Coming to the growth structure, when you take Crohn's disease, first I'll talk about Crohn's disease now. Okay, in between it is coming because some of the same things are common there. So, Crohn's disease, as I told, it is most common site is ileum. It can affect cecum also. It is transmural. Whereas when you take a growth structure, what you can see, you can see the, the characteristic, the primary thing. What you see is aphthous ulcers. You can see aphthous ulcers as the primary finding or primary feature in the growth structure. Aphthous ulcers. This aphthous ulcers can coalesce together and it can form a serpentine ulcer. It can lead to serpentine ulcers. This aphthous ulcers coalesce together and it forms 
serpentine ulcers. You can see something known as creeping fat. The mesenteric fat oozes out and it surrounds the, uh, the layers there. It forms the creeping fat. Creeping fat is one of the features you can see in uh, Crohn's disease. And one more thing, what you classically see when you take the intestine, in that particular, the ileum or the, uh, the affected structure, the ileum or the cecum, you can see the cobblestone appearance. It's like a cobblestone appearance. I, I think you can know what is cobblestone. So you can see cobblestone appearance of the intestine can be seen, of the mucosa can be seen. Cobblestone appearance of mucosa is a classical or a characteristic symptom or feature of the gross feature of the Crohn's disease. Then there will be a rubbery thick intestine. The intestine will be rubbery, the intestine will be rubbery thick. Okay, that is one of the things. Then there is something called skip lesions. It's not continuous, it's skip lesions. Some lesions are here, then it won't be nothing, it will be normal, then it comes in. So that's why it says cobblestone appearance. Cobblestone, stone is there, nothing is there, again one more stone is there. So it's a skip lesions. Skip lesions can be seen in Crohn's disease. So these are some of the uh, classical thing gross, grossly you can see. What about the microscopic features? So microscopic features, the main thing you can see is non-caseating granulomas. Non-caseating granulomas are the classical thing you can see in a microscopic feature. Then the next thing what you see is, you can see cryptitis, you can see cryptic abscess. Okay, cryptitis and you can see cryptic abscess. So the one more, uh, the other microscopic feature, when you have a barium scan, when you have a barium scan, you can see a sign known as string sign of canter. String sign of canter, K-A-N-T-O-R. String sign of canter is one of the finding, a barium, when you see it, take the barium scan, you can see string sign of canter. So that's about something about Crohn's disease. Now coming to ulcerative colitis, as I told you most common sign of ulcerative colitis is rectum followed by colon because from the rectum it goes retrograde spread to the colon. Okay, so it's a backwash ileitis happen can happen. Backwash ileitis, it's going back to the colon to the ileum, terminal ileum. So from rectum it can go to the colon, it can affect the colon, it can even affect the terminal ileum. That is known as backwash ileitis. Okay, so ulcerative colitis most common site is rectum followed by colon retrograde spread. The layer affected is submucosal layer and you can see backwash ileitis, the most common thing you can see pseudo polyps. So in Crohn's we have after ulcer, here we have in ulcerative colitis we have pseudo polyps. Pseudo polyps can be seen as a characteristic feature, as a main gross feature of the ulcerative colitis. Also you can see cryptitis and cryptic abscess. So cryptitis, cryptic abscess is more common in ulcerative colitis than the Crohn's disease. It can be seen in both but it is more common in ulcerative colitis. So pseudopolyps, cryptitis, cryptic abscess can be seen. Uh, the pseudopolyps actually it uh, uh, fuse with each other forming mucosal bridges. They can form bridges known as mucosal bridges. This pseudopolyps uh, fuses with each other and form mucosal bridges. So ulcerative colitis is also known as toxic megacolon. The other name for ulcerative colitis is toxic megacolon. That you have to keep in your mind. Toxic megacolon is also known as ulcerative colitis. So now right now Crohn's disease is there, you know gross feature of Crohn's disease, microscopic feature of Crohn's disease, gross feature of ulcerative colitis, microscopic feature of ulcerative colitis. Now coming to the clinical feature of IBD, IBD itself the clinical feature of inflammatory bowel disease. One first one you can see fever, you can see abdominal pain, you can see diarrhea. Okay, so fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea are the main classical symptoms, but you cannot say fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea, anything it can happen gastrointestinal symptoms, anything, even a food poisoning can be there. So that is that itself is not a symptom. So fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea is has to be there. That is a three main symptoms. Along with that, you have extra intestinal manifestations. You have many other manifestations. Extra intestinal means you have you can affect dermatologically, you can see manifestation, you can get hepatobiliary manifestations there, musculoskeletal, renal. Okay. So then these many manifestations can ophthalmic manifestations. So these many are extra intestinal manifestations. In that dermatologically you can see erythema nodosum is a classical thing what you can see. Erythema nodosum can be seen as a dermatological manifestation in IBD. Ophthalmic you can see uveitis, iritis can be seen. Okay. Renal you can see calcium oxalate nephrolithiasis can be seen. Musculoskeletal when you take angylosing spondylitis, some kind of arthritis. Some of the arthritis I don't remember exactly the name. So arthritis is a common thing symptom. There are many types of arthritis. So Especially saying spondylosing, uh, angulosing spondylitis can be a manifestation seen in ulcerative colitis. Then hematologically, it can affect even the hematology, blood, anemia. Anemia can be a reason, thrombocytopenia, thrombocytosis, all this can, uh, 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 can be a result or a manifestation of a IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. Hepatobiliary, primary sclerosing cholangitis. Primary sclerosing cholangitis is a classical 
manifestation seen as a hepatobiliary manifestation along with that you can see fatty liver so these things can be seen as extra intestinal manifestations of IBD so fever diarrhea abdominal pain with extra intestinal manifestations are the symptoms of the clinical feature of IBD now diagnosing or investigation you can say uh, there are antibodies to uh, diagnose the uh, test can be done uh, then scanning you can do CECT scan abdomen CECT scan scan abdomen CECT abdomen can be done MRI can be done CECT any abdominal thing CT is the gold standard CECT is the gold standard you can do as a uh, I mean investigation of uh, inflammatory bowel disease colonoscopy endoscopy with colonoscopy that's the main thing first you do endoscopy with colonoscopy can be done so these are the main thing and also uh, ulcerative colitis if IBD is not treated you can go to colon cancer that has to be ruled out so colonoscopy is a, one of the important investigations so colonoscopy is done uh, to rule out colon cancer because the risk of colon cancer is more than IBD according to the res uh, recent researches colon cancer risk of colon cancer is more in IBD so you have to make sure if you have an IBD you have to make sure it doesn't go to colon cancer you have to take a protective preventive um, you cannot prevent the further further thing you can prevent the treatment wise you can see I am coming to the management now management how can you manage this particular thing the classical thing is steroids is being given steroids as enema can be given per orally or IV that is a management what we uh, usually uh, treat for the IBD it is management by giving steroids as enemas I hope you know enema enema can as P perorally or IV then other thing can be monoclonal antibodies can be given like infleximab that can be given then the other thing is sulfasalazine sulfasalazine can be given as a treatment so if you have steroid side effective the steroids are not affected then next comes the surgical resection surgical procedure like proctocolectomy can be done with anastomosis exact anastomosis some specific name is there I don't remember so proctocolectomy is the procedure can be done okay proctocolectomy with anastomosis of the terminal ileum area so proctocolectomy is a thing what we do as a surgical so surgical resection complete is a uh, main line of treatment in ulcerative colitis that can be done and one more thing I have forgot to tell is ulcerative colitis is a continuous lesion compared to Crohn's disease Crohn's disease was a skip lesion so that is the thing so I'll just summarize a few points the difference between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis Crohn's disease the most common site is ileum followed by cecum whereas ulcerative colitis it is the most common site is rectum followed by colon it's a retrograde spread the second point uh, I'll talk about HLA HLA DR1 is the uh, thing you can say in Crohn's disease whereas HLA DR2 is the HLA in uh, ulcerative colitis the risk factor coming to the risk factor Smoking is said to be a risk factor in Crohn's disease, whereas smoking is protective in ulcerative colitis. So that is the twist there. But doesn't mean that smoking is a cure for this. Don't do that. So risk factor, smoking is a risk factor for Crohn's disease, whereas smoking is a protective for ulcerative colitis. So doesn't mean you have to smoke every day. It's, a, it's, it's related to this difference we are telling. Okay. And smoking is also protecting one more cancer that is endometrial cancer also it is protective so ulcerative colitis and endometrial cancer smoking is a protective thing so doesn't mean you have to go and smoke to protect this thing you will get some other cancer okay smoking is injurious to health never smoke okay then what about CD4 the cells the CD4 TH1 is a cells which present this is present in the Crohn's disease whereas CD4 TH2 cells are present in the ulcerative colitis gross features what I told earlier we have after cells are in uh, Crohn's disease skip lesions cobblestone appearance uh, we have a deep knife like ulcers means it is a deep and knife like ulcers I forgot to mention first I told then in the gross in the gross we can see one more feature is deep and knife like ulcers skip patients can be seen cobblestone appearance can be seen okay after ulcers it coalesces together to form serpentine ulcers so these are the gross features of Crohn's disease whereas gross feature of ulcerative colitis we can see continuous lesions, pseudo polyps, cryptitis, cryptic abscess can be seen. Whereas microscopically, uh, and microscopically, the classical feature you can see in Crohn's disease is non cassiating granulomas. Whereas in uh, ulcerative colitis, you cannot see uh, non cassiating granulomas. Okay. So that's the difference between uh, you can see cryptic abscess and cryptitis more common in ulcerative colitis. So these are some of the differences between the uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So 
hope if you have any abdominal pain or fever recurrent diarrhea you have to go and rule out it can be anything okay normal with the food poisoning it can be going up to a colon cancer also so most commonly females are affected doesn't mean that males are not affected males are also affected it is more common in western countries compared to our countries south asian countries or india western countries and caucasian countries are more most commonly affected avoid spicy food avoid smoking so many risk factors are there uh, timely food like have food when proper time and make sure of all the other things you are everything can be contribute to this i have just told about the summarize it can see external medicine manifestations can be many thing okay risk factors that are smoking is a risk factor in crohn's disease but generally when you see any any particular disease smoking spicy food uh, decrease in sleep decrease appetite decrease in mean uh, decrease sleep especially too much of stress in the work so these many things can affect any any disease it can be a cause okay genetically we cannot do anything genetically so these are the things you have to uh, take care and uh, so i hope this will be a helpful video thank you thank you for supporting